to our Wednesday evening worship. We love being with you as we are in the post-Easter season. We have now entered in through the blood of the Lamb, and we are rejoicing in a resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask each of you to pray with me right now, and we're just going to dive into worship. We've got an incredible testimony of how the Lord is ministering in this season, how he's showing up and answering prayer that we get to share with you. And of course, a wonderful message drawing us into abiding in Christ. So let's pray together, shall we? Holy one, mm, we love you, God. We love you, Jesus. We're here for you. We're here to honor you. We're here to exalt you. We're here to see you and to be transformed into the image of your son, Lord God, that we would become the bride that fills his heart with joy and with pride, with love abundant and overwhelming. Father, I thank you we get to come, bring you all that we have, lay it all down and say we are here to worship you. We're here to exalt you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for you. I thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. I thank you for this holy moment. Draw us in as we praise you. May we see you. May we be like you as we behold you. In Jesus' name, may we receive so much love that it just floods our being and comes through us to everyone we speak with, everyone we connect with, everyone we pray for, even in our hearts, Lord. We honor you. We thank you for our Jubilee family. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our Jubilee. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat>
Our God is so good, and the Lord just blew me away, and I'm going to be so real and honest right now, but this is why we're here, to share the testimonies of our faith, of what God can do. Jordan and I had lack. We were $300 short on paying our mortgage and our rent, and, you know, we don't want to get in debt and all that, so, and you have to pay that, obviously, and the Lord so blew me away and surprised me. And I have a little boutique that I started about um, eight months ago that is just really small and sells a women's clothing line and baby clothes. And I decided to sell masks. That's what people need. And literally I sold them for eight bucks. I barely made anything off of it. It was like maybe two bucks a mask. And we had to pay our rent the 15th um, today. And this happened uh, four days ago and I put those masks up and I just put it out on social media if there's anyone that needs a mask and literally in the next 48 hours I had so many sales I had so many sales I don't know where these people came from they were all over the United States I don't know if people sent were sending 
to each other. Maybe, hey, you need a mask, can you mask? It was just the Lord. It was the Lord providing for us. And we came out with a profit of $321.97. And we got the payout. We got the profit yesterday. And we were able to pay our mortgage. And that's just a testimony of the Lord that He provides. He will provide for you. That there is no lack for those that love the Lord. There is no good thing that He will withhold from you. And I just was so blown away because I wasn't charging much for them. There, that was just an immaculate amount of the Lord to make up that ground to be able to pay this bill. And I just, we just praise God and we were laughing and just praising God. And it's just amazing. And Lord, we just thank you. And so Jubilee, we just bless you. We bless your house right now that the storehouses of heaven will open and pour out, that the creative ideas will be unlocked inside of you, that will come forth, that will make a way, a back door from heaven just to pour out. And this is the thing. This was, this was heaven's agenda. The heaven's agenda is just to pour out over the body of Christ. There is no lack over you. I speak that out. There is no lack over you. The Lord will not hold one good thing from you. The, all of your bills will get paid. All of your mortgages will get paid on time. Everything, all is well with you. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. You are covered. Your health is perfect. You are perfectly, fearfully, and wonderfully made. So God, we just give you praise. Thank you for that. Thank you for providing for my family. Thank you, God, for using a back door from heaven to pour your spirit out so we can pay our mortgage. Thank you, Lord, that you are good in all of your ways, God. So let's just give God some praise. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart.
Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do.
on. This is a response to everything that's happened with the coronavirus and just the whole world. This is a heart posture. Just turn your heart to the Lord. This is a jubilee song. We're just going to worship. Yes, Lord. Like a shell of it own and I will trust in you and I will look to you you have the final say and I will look to you I will look to you
Father, we come into agreement that you are far greater in your son. His death, burial, resurrection that we just celebrated has overwhelmed the COVID-19 and is removing it from our planet because by your stripes we were healed. You bore sickness, carried away our diseases. We will not forget these benefits. We declare that right now in the name of Jesus, strength is coming to the body. Joy is coming to the body. Faith and hope and expectancy. We're in a new day. Even though it might be dark in places that people are affected by how they feel, how they see, what's sounding. We declare right now in the name of Jesus that the lion of the tribe of Judah has overwhelmed darkness, has overwhelmed sick, sickness and death and the demons. And we declare life right now. Life. Life. We speak life into the earth life into the body of Christ, joy and peace and righteousness. All kinds of incredible things are coming right now. We, the body of Jesus, agree with the head, Jesus, that all things have been placed under his feet, our feet, and he is the head of all things to the body which we are, his church, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Fill, fill, heal, deliver, redeem. You are more than great. You are more than a conqueror, Heavenly Father. And we are too in Jesus Christ. Amen. And I share a vision I heard or saw on Easter Sunday. Cam and I were waiting for the service as we were preparing to come in and picked up two cards received from two families from two different places in in California. Uh, different cities. They were a part of our congregation for many years. And they both sent letters to, of thanks and gratitude for the journey. But they, inside the outside of the card were two pictures of a lion. The first I opened up was a lion roaring. And then the second was a lion standing in that stately position of peace and authority. And we were really taken back with two to get two cards and they both have a picture of the lion and as we sought the lord the lord began to speak to us about the the 
lion of the tribe of Judah has overcome, and that was through the lamb slain. And it's right during Passover, all these were sent out. So we believe that in the name of Jesus, that the virus that has ravaged the earth has now been conquered in Christ. It may take a little bit for it to be seen or recognized or, or accepted, but in the name of Jesus, we declare that COVID-19 will no longer prevail and wreak havoc in the earth. And life will begin to return, not to normal, but to Christ. He is the Lord. He is taking charge of this moment. And I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Oh, gosh. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. We're so glad to be together. And we're going to uh, receive our tithes and offerings because, well, it's what we do. Hey, good news. We've gone into the giving of uh, tithes with, you know, some are still mailing, some are dropping off at the church, but a lot of us, like myself, started using the digital tithely, and probably I will never go back to it because it's just become super efficient. And I want to thank you because we right now, the 15th of the month, we are halfway in our budget. We've, we've halfway of our income budget. We've met it. And that's because God is faithful because you and I, we're just not letting the circumstances of life to cause us to fear and retreat, but we're honoring God. He's the one. If there's anyone to honor right now, keep him first. Keep him foremost because he is our answer. He's our answer. You can be a part of giving to the COVID-19 fund to help bless and release. We, uh, something's going to happen. If you've been overwhelmed in circumstances, God's coming to overwhelm the circumstances. Just like the testimony we heard tonight. There are creative, powerful ways for God to release blessings. So I want to pray right now. I believe what the declaration, the decree God gave me to declare is that we're coming out in health and in wealth. We're not coming out without in negative and loss, but we're coming into a better place, a new place. I praise you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we bring our tithes and offerings, we honor the fact that you told us to always remember you. Even in the darkest times, we should give you first because then you make us first and you break things free. This is the time of great breakthrough, great open doors, new opportunities that have never yet been touched. And we receive them. I receive them for every brother and sister, every member of Jubilee, for the body of Christ at large. There is coming breakthrough. We will have testimony upon testimony upon testimony of the new things that God has brought into the earth during what was a dark moment for humanity. God began to shine a light, a bright and brilliant light. So blessings, perfection, grace, and kindness to this moment. And for all of us in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So I want to let everybody know we have, <clears throat> yesterday we were able to collect all the data of all the people, which you think, well, that shouldn't be that hard. But when we see each other weekly or bi-weekly or in different settings, we all kind of know each other and we already feel where we all are, but also we had to find out where everybody was. So we've collected all of the names and the people that we have and we've assigned those who are willing to pray for five people or six people or three people. And so everyone now is, is being activated to be prayed for, to be brought into Christ as we first bring ourselves into Christ and get our fully connected, fully collected, fully enjoying life, righteousness, peace, and joy, Holy Spirit. Bring our families, bring our spouse, our children, our grandchildren, our, our parents, and then bring those who are part of the body of Christ that we are watching over and covering. And we bring them, bring us all in, and then we listen for Christ speaking over us, and then we begin to get prepared to release the love of God the love of God by speaking the truth of the things we hear. So we're, we're, we're in, hoping by Friday on our webpage to have information how you can enjoy praying for your loved ones. And uh, if you're curious who's praying for me or you want to make sure you are being prayed for, just email us at mycity, 
jubileechurch.org, mycity at jubileechurch.org, and we can let you know who we, who we have. And if we're not in there yet, we will get you in there because this is like the time we've been separated physically. God is collecting us spiritually and compacting us together intentionally. And I believe that from the head is coming life and the truth being spoken in love is going to cause the body to grow up into him and grow up in all ways to edification and love. So, yes. Amen. Okay. I want to take us, we're going to open up in Psalm 103. And let me tell you a backstory for this evening. Sunday, I was asked the Lord, well, Wednesday, what are we doing now after Easter? And he said, he gave me a title. He said, making the most of our death benefits. And I thought, wow, that's hmm, okay. I, I know, I know your voice enough. You'll fill that in later. So this today, I've obviously been meditating. There's scripture here, scripture there, chapter here, go over there. But I was finishing my prayer time and I said, Lord, so where, what are you, why did you give me this title? And he just, I heard this voice just come so clearly. He says, my people are not claiming their benefits. I have all these benefits that are going unclaimed. And I thought, that's just an interesting concept because we're in this moment where many benefits are being claimed, whether in the natural world, unemployment benefits and, you know, uh, stimulus package benefits. And, and it's, it's, it's a current word and yet the lord spoke to me and as soon as he said that he took me to psalm 103 i thought oh okay we're going to claim our benefits so i want to invite you tonight we're going to go into the courtroom of god into the throne room of grace and sit with jesus the mediator as he now resurrected reads his testament that he died to put in place now cannot be altered and as he reads as we hear him declare this testament we're going to receive these benefits and let them let them uh take advantage take advantage of them let them manifest so psalm 103 verse 1 begins by saying bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name one thing we're all learning to do right now is direct our soul to where we want it to go to where will he want it to look upon, to praise, to proclaim. A soul is a magnifier. It's like the screen on the device you're, you're, you're watching me on. It, the device itself is not what's bringing the image. It just has the capacity to enlarge the image, multiply the sound. So is our soul. We don't create life from the soul. The soul is an amplifier of life or it can amplify death. It can amplify fear. It can amplify love. It can amplify joy. It can amplify discouragement and sorrow. So the first thing David does, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, his holy name. So we call our soul to bless. We call that's within us to release praise. And we bless him because this is what our soul is meant to do, to be given direction, to put its focus on God and on the Lord. Then he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So think of us. We're listening as the benefits of the resurrected Christ are read. To his death, to his victory. Don't forget, soul. You have to. The word forget means to put out of, out of use. To, to set it aside, not know where you left it. To, it becomes obscure. It's the opposite of when Jesus said, If you'll keep my commandments, then we'll fellowship and the Father and the Spirit. Which... The keeping was to value them, know exactly where they are, give them place in our life. And this forgetting is kind of like, oh, I didn't know that was there. So now tonight we're going to hear these benefits. He forgives all your iniquities. No matter where we are in what we're doing, I want to tell you one thing. There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus there is no shame and blame to rest upon us over our past actions or actions of others. We have been forgiven forever, completely, past, present, and future. And we have to have our soul magnify that. He heals all your diseases. Who, so David is calling his soul to bless the Lord. Now he's calling his soul to remember, to magnify, and to begin to... to 
to think upon these benefits. He heals all your diseases. So you don't have to worry. If you're afraid that sickness or lack or, or loss is coming upon your house, we want, I want you to be, listen to these benefits because we're going to release them and they're going to break open. They're going to come forth with double anointing on you tonight and there's going to be a great outpouring of help in heaven. Because the benefits, God wants us to claim them. Who redeems your life from destruction. Destruction is the place where we find ourselves, oh, I got stuck here. I don't know how I got trapped into this setting. I don't know how I got into this pit. I don't know where I am in this. I'm locked up and I don't know how to get out. He redeems us. He redeems our life from the pit. He calls us up and calls us out. And boy, is he going to do that for us tonight. So remember that who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, praise Jesus. A crown is to surround us as though to, pre- to preserve us as a, as a defense or a crown to place over our head as something to which we recognize and carry authority. And it's loving kindness and tender mercies. It's this goodness of God who satisfies your mouth with good things. So there's good things to eat. There's good things to speak. There's good things to feast upon in the Lord. And those, that mouth filled with praise, filled with thanksgiving, filled with joy, you, you'd be surprised. It's just, it's, it, it causes us to be satisfied so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Eagles go through molting times. <clears throat> They're holed up. They lose their beak. They lose their feathers. They... They, they pretty much become pretty vulnerable. But all of a sudden, it all comes back, but it's new. It's the renewal of the e- eagle's youth. And that's what's coming for each of us. So tell your soul, I'm coming out of this healthy and wealthy. I'm coming out of this in a new place, in a renewed place, with new strength, because I'm waiting on the Lord. I may be sitting in, in safer at home. No, it's safer in Christ. And I'm going to stay home and keep safety for others, but I'm going to go into Christ and become a new creation, a fresh, beautiful bride. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. No matter where we are in, in this upside-down, topsy-turvy moment, God's going to take care of us. That's something we have to declare. We have to declare that. It isn't coming by the government. It isn't coming by uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the financial situations. It, it may, we are impacted. But Jesus Christ said, I'm going to bring justice to all who are oppressed. I'm going to step in. And we declare that's a benefit of his death and a benefit now of ours in his resurrection. Who he made known to his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. This is a pivotal, pivotal truth. Moses spent much time in the glory of God. We have time to be in the glory of God because we're in Christ. And Christ is the glory of God. And he is the brightness of his glory. And in the face of Jesus, we see the glory. And in that moment, we begin to understand the ways of God. Moses knew why God moved, and he knew God from the names of God that had been spoken and the fellowship that they had. But he says his acts he only showed to the children of Israel. A miracle here, a miracle there, something happened here. But it wasn't, it wasn't, they saw the results where Moses understood the ways. May it be, make that a, that's a benefit we've been given, a benefit to know the ways of God. The Lord is merciful and gracious. This, is the, this was the cornerstone way of God that Moses was shown in, on the mount of, in Exodus 34, on, the, on Mount Sinai, when the Lord came down and passed him in his glory and proclaimed the name of the Lord and said, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. He, merciful means to hold and And as like a newborn child, to fondle, to carry. And gracious means to stoop down and to get involved in help, to to lift up. And I take these moments. This is a benefit. I want to receive the mercy of the Lord holding me, embracing me, carrying me, keeping me, making me safe. And I want to allow the Lord to step into my life and make a difference. Think of it if you were in the most overwhelming moment of the day. You were busy with kids or you're stuck trying to do work from home or, or you're just overwhelmed emotionally and all of a sudden Jesus comes in. 
If he was to come in in our disheveled moment, he wouldn't come in and look around and go, hmm, is that as good as you can do it? First thing he would do is he'd come and he would embrace you. He would take each of us and he would pull us into himself and put love, poor love, poor affection, poor acceptance, poor defense, and let us know that this pouring out of himself into us till we were one with him in that knowing. We were again, ah, I'm held. Then he would look around and go, hey, can I help? Wash the dishes. Can I, can I sit down, uh, talk, talk about what you're, what you're feeling, or can I go help? He, he's very, he, kindness it gets actively involved. He would be that way. And that helps because that's the way of God. And if I understand the ways, then I won't be looking at certain things and go, oh, no, it's all my fault, or oh, I've got to do this, or I've got to do that. And I would just go, no, no, no. First thing God's going to do when Jesus stops in, he's going to love me. And after he loves me well, he's going to help save me. He's going to, set, he's going to change some things. He's slow to anger. He abounds in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He's not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Think of that. You, you can go north, and at some point, you're going south. And you can go south, and at some time, you're going north. But if you go east, you never go west. You just go east. So he's just separating from uh, the sin from us as far as the east is from the west. Well, that's a benefit. We should let him do that. Amen? As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over and it's gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to his children's children. The death benefits of the Lord Jesus extend generationally. Let's pull the generational blessings that have preceded us and let's release the blessings of the, of the generations coming after us. Let's let this thing break free. His mercy everlasting, his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant, value, watch over, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. Oh, beloved, we are in a good place. And these are the benefits the Lord said to me. I want, them to, I want everyone to claim my benefits, my death benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. So we don't have to think, can this happen in my present situation, in my situation, with the way things have gone? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Because God does not need man to do what he said. He only needs himself to accomplish what he spoke. That's what Abraham came to learn, that he who promised was able also to perform it. And that conclusion of faith, he was imputed righteousness into. God said, that's righteousness. When you believe what I say I can do and what I say I will do. And his kingdom rules over all. So here we closing this before we start to release ministry. Bless the Lord. You, his angels. Now we're telling our soul to bless the Lord. Now he's saying, bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength. Angels come to minister to the, to the heirs of salvation. They come to help us in our journey. Who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. But angels aren't just our servants. They're his servants to accomplish his word. And they heed the voice of his word. So once we open our mouth and begin to repeat and declare, we claim the benefits. You see, first we have to remember the benefits. Then we've got to start claiming the benefits, which we're going to do. And when we start claiming the benefits in the word, the truth of the word, the next thing, what happens? Angels start, whoa, did you hear that? He heals all your disease. Steve just said he heals all your disease. Let's go make a quick body scan, make sure that that word is performed and we're not going to let that disengagement, we, we've got, we're here to do that. That's what we do. We heed the voice of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. 
Bless the Lord, all his works in all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. This is a psalm of not just, it's calibrating ourselves back into truth, laying hold of the things that are invisible but are meant to become visible in our life. They are the benefits that have been given to us in Christ's death. And now they are accessible in his word by spirit and truth. His word is truth. The Holy Spirit manifests them. And from starting with our soul, focusing, remembering, declaring, then by the declaration of these truths, we begin to just say these are true. The angels start to respond to the words we're speaking. And they come with their their dynamic ministry. It might be sent to bring healing or sent to bring joy or sent to bring strength or sent to bring hope. Jesus was strengthened in the garden because he had been overwhelmed in the sorrow of his soul in the intercession at Gethsemane and an angel came and strengthened him. So the angels are ministers of fire, flames, but they don't respond to our beck and call. They respond to the voice of the word. They are here to do the word. So you're ready? We, we finished hearing a good portion of a good, good covenant and benefits. And wherever we are right now, it's time. It's time to receive the benefits, to step inside Christ, hear his voice, agree with him. So we begin by saying, soul, <clears throat> you're a gift and I'm so glad that you're part of me the God my father the God of peace is sanctifying me holy spirit soul and body and soul I just say to you bless the Lord I bless you Lord I bless the Lord soul bless the Lord you see we can be our mouth can be engaged but our heart drifts and when you can get your mouth and your heart in, in agreement and then you get your soul in focus we can become we become like capable of seeing and becoming alive again so let's go back we're going to start bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget none of his benefits forget i will not forget your benefits i will bring them to mind i will bring my the benefits of the lord to mind I will bless you. I will bless you. I will bring your benefits forward. And I declare tonight that you heal all my diseases and you forgive all my iniquities. So let's just take a moment. We begin to worship. Simply say, soul, bless the Lord. Soul, don't forget. All of your iniquities have been forgiven. Soul, all your diseases are healed. Steve, don't look about and try to sort out. You're going to figure it out. Just declare, just agree. The Lord has said it so. That's what he's doing right now. As we connect to truth in Christ, Holy Spirit makes us one with Christ. Angels listening, they're performing. We are engaging. I declare tonight, there's a breaker anointing coming. There's a breakthrough anointing coming. There's a joy anointing coming for each one of us. So let's begin by blessing the Lord and begin to bless him in our forgiveness toward us, his healing for us in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. We bless you, Lord. Yes, Lord. So bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Make, bring your soul up. Bring your soul forward to bless. We bless you, Lord. Soul, bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let your soul bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. My. causing a light to begin to shine even as we sing even as we declare these words the soul is beginning to illuminate light begins to shine 
life begins to look differently. It's not the way you felt before. It's the way God spoke it to be. You're coming into your future. It's in Christ. It's bright. It's brilliant. It's powerful. All iniquities washed away. Forgiveness extended. Sins are removed from the east to the west. We are far away. He has done a new work. Let the sound, let the sound of forgiveness fill you in every way. Soul, hear forgiveness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I'm forgiven. We make it our declaration. We make it our proclamation. And we're healed. We're healed. Soul, remember. We're healed. Don't forget the benefit. Healing is our bread. It's the children's bread. We're the children of God. We are healed. In the body, listen to that. Angels are hearing that. Salvation. Healing. Deliverance from the pit. Wherever you're caught, we're caught. Oh, we're coming out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Step up. Get up. Get out. Come on. Into a better place. Hold your place. Get in the better place. Resist the enemy. He flees. Right now, we're submitting to God. So the devil has to flee. We submit to the truth, the word of God. Oh, there's, there's, there's power coming right now to receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Make it yours. Forget not his benefits. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All of them. I'm taking my benefits. I'm claiming them in Jesus' name. That's all I need. Is to remember and then use the name of Jesus Christ. And then we connect. I'm claiming it. I'm receiving my benefits. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He redeems my life from the destruction. And he crowns my life with loving kindness tender mercies oh yeah oh yeah we're coming out of where we've been trapped and we're coming into our broad beautiful place see it claim it expect it Jesus said to me I want my church to claim their benefits my death benefits to which I died for that I made promise to and my resurrection that now holds that promise in place my spirit that demonstrates it my angels that listen to the voice of my word let's let this thing break through Oh, go ahead. Reach out for your children. Reach out for your grandkids. Prophesy. Go beyond. You see, praise always leads us to prophecy too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's... magnifier it's the it's the funnel of to allow all of the benefits to find expression when we just prayed a moment ago i saw a bright light breaking into someone's kitchen or someone's living room it was the light of the angelic revelation and it was coming to displace the gloom and the doom and the sense of hopelessness and despair it came with a brilliance it was the glory of God to reveal Christ in the mirror of the word, in the face of Jesus Christ. It was, oh, receive, receive, receive the illumination of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Christ. You can just say, Saul, receive now the revelation of Christ who's entered into this moment and I'm in it and I receive it. I receive it. Yes, Lord. Oh, Oh, healing started happening. There were multiple healings. There was eye healings. I saw them. They were inside the eyelid. They were inside the, the, the focus point. You know, so it was vision related and it was virus related. And there were two, there were multiple ways of healing that were coming from multiple cases, as well as hearing in the right ear. And there was things that were going on the left leg, the left knee, and the left hip, and the muscles and, and the structure. And there was just wholeness coming healing coming wholeness he heals all 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 
all our diseases, all our dis-ease, all the discomfort. He's restoring. He's making all things new in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Receive. Claim it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Forget none. He's doing it. He's doing it. See the angels going forth at the sound of our voice to his word we give voice to the word and I see angels being dispatched to loved ones to family members I see the angels being dispatched to financial breakthroughs and help in this time of trouble I see them going forth and moving things in accordance with God's word and his will and they're activated by our voice and we are claiming the benefits. Jesus didn't die so that we would just languish on this planet in the midst of a COVID pandemic. He came alive so that we could rise up in him and be an answer of life to those around us. So we could walk in joy and peace and hope and happiness. We could have a, 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 a sense of expectancy because we know the ways of God. God's taking advantage of this. The devil may have come to bring death and destruction and has hurt and killed and med, maimed and mess, messed things up. But Jesus Christ said, I've got that in my resurrection and I'm bringing victory. And if you'll lay hold of my death benefits, then you'll come into this. You'll come out of this. You'll come into inheritance. We may be in chaos right now, but we're coming into an inheritance. Uh, why do I know? Because the word of God says so. And because this is the time to lay claim to resurrection life. Yes, we've suffered death. We've experienced the identification carrying the death of our Lord in our body. But that's so the life of Christ can be manifest. God's going to manifest life. Tell your soul that. Soul, get ready for manifestation of new life. Eagle, transference, freedom, flight, comfort, learning the ways of God. They're all here. All here right now. It's just worship. I want, to I want you to receive. There's a wave of strength coming from the glory realm into the inner man. Christ is stepping into our heart fresh with faith. And we're standing strong inside of love. There's a new anointing coming for, for healing. And there's another wave of God's glory and renewal coming. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's our declaration. Yes. My youth is renewed like the eagle. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Mm -hmm. My youth is renewed like, like the eagles. eagles. My youth is, is renewed like the eagles. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. I agree. I agree. Bless I agree. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. That's what you're doing right now. We're rising up. We're stepping in, taking hold of the place that God gave us, grabbing his benefits. I bless you. I love you. I feel you. All of them, they're going. All of them, all of them, all of them. All of them. All of them. He's doing it right now, right now. We're taking hold. He forgives all iniquities and he heals all Oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We declare right now that we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God in Christ Jesus. And that we are the body of Christ, members one of another, in love with one another, in love with Christ. And we are taking from the head all of the benefits of blessing, healing, deliverance, salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit, renewal of our faith, freshness of life. 
and all of the strongholds that have been trying to hold us in captivity. He is redeeming us out of and he's breaking us free into this mercy and graciousness and this way of God. I bless you. Let this psalm tomorrow just start your day and just make it your own personal. You see declarations, claiming something. Sometimes we think we go through a lot of hoops to claim things on the earth. And it's not that we go through hoops with God, but there is the soul, that soul hooper. You have to kind of go, so come on, get back on track. We're not going to disengage because it didn't happen today. We're going to stay engaged until we, it manifests, but we don't need to try to control somebody or anything because we're just going to be a receiver, a big, fat receiver. That's what spirit is, a great receiver. Soul is a great magnifier. And once we get touched and the connection happens, Oh, praise Jesus. Let's bless our neighborhood right now. Father, we bless the neighbors that we live near. Those that we love and those that we care for. Those that are up and down our street or across the street or in our region where we live. We declare right now that the peace of God that is passing all understanding, guarding us, now guards them. And the joy of the Lord begins to fill households. And faith is rising because the revelation of Jesus Christ is coming into homes. We're not, we may be sheltering down because we're under the shelter of the Most High. And we may be staying home because it's safer at home, but it's even perfect in Christ. It's salvation in Christ. And we declare that uh, there is coming a a powerful move. A powerful move starting with us. Starting with you. Starting with me. I, why, why not start with us? Why? We are the sons of God. This is the truth of God. The Spirit of God is abiding. You can cry out, Oh God, renew my faith so that salvation is fresh again. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe he was raised from the dead. I call him my Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Release my tongues. Let me pray in other tongues. Let me give thanks. Let me come alive. We declare right now to all of Jubilee, to all of the body of Jesus Christ, that you are coming forth in victory. You're coming out of the wilderness, leaning on your beloved. You're coming into the identity of acceptance in the beloved, into inheritance, into trust, into assurance, into expectancy. It's now. Now. And all we have to do is keep our soul in remembrance and our mouth in agreement and our heart in believing and these benefits that God Jesus did so much to bring to us will be ours and we will enjoy them and give them away help others we'll carry what we've been given and give it away freely we've received freely we will give this is who we are this is the hour we were called to live in this is the greatest hour the church has ever yet seen because the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit is now upon the face of the earth. Love you. Bless you. Can't wait till we're together on Sunday. Practice this. It's so good. God bless.